Hi, I'm Rose McAvoy. I'm a health coach and creator of Plateful of Grace. I'm so excited you're here today. I'm gonna bet that you are a smart person and you have a pretty good idea of what eating healthy looks like. But have you ever thought about how you eat and how that could potentially impact your healthy choices and boost your weight loss success? Stick around, I've got some things to talk about. Today we're gonna to talk about a mindset that you can cultivate before you even put a single piece of food on your plate. This comes from my dear mentor, who was a very smart lady, who realized that for herself, she was gonna to need to set up some parameters, some boundaries, so that she could keep herself in check anytime, anywhere, and stay on the path that she had chosen for herself. She called this, these rules, eating with dignity. The main takeaway when it comes to eating with dignity goes to the root of the definition of the word dignity, which is a state or quality of being worthy of honor or respect. It also includes having a sense of pride in oneself. And oh my gosh, when it comes to healthy eating, those are qualities that I definitely want you to think about bringing to the table, the literal table. How can the choices that you make about how you're eating, not even necessarily what you're eating, but how you're eating, be a reflection of your pride, of your self-worth, of your self-respect? How can these things be part of your journey to build those qualities in and of yourself? This is not about taking a huge amount of time. This is about creating some space so that you can just be present with the choices that you're making, the food that you're eating, the day that you're having. You can be more aware of your thoughts and feelings about food or about life in general while you're taking the time to, to sit down and nourish your body. And it also is about giving your body the opportunity to do its job of taking in nourishment rather than doing six things at once while you're also cramming some food in your mouth. I mean, how often do we go blowing through the day and we get to a certain point and we go, oh my gosh, I didn't even eat anything today. Or you go, I can't remember what I ate today. Neither of those are serving you very well. And so when you're eating with dignity, you're giving yourself the time and the space and the respect to take in that nourishment and to register what's happening and to acknowledge just a small moment of your day that you're giving to yourself to be kind to yourself. When you're cultivating your rules of for eating with dignity, make sure that they fit you. There needs to be a slight aspirational element to it, but something that you can step into easily and really make sense as a goal for yourself in your life, in your, in your day, in your flow. All right, so what does eating with dignity look like on a practical level? Well, first of all, whether this any of the others fit on your rules or not, I'm gonna tell you, this goes at the top. Sit down. Sit down. Make that space. Take that time. Honor yourself. Create that sense of pride in yourself. When it comes to the list that my mentor made, this was a really important um, element for her because she was using the sit down rule as a way to help her reduce the number of thoughtless nibbles that she was having during the course of her day in her life. So for instance, if there was something she wanted to try at the grocery store at Costco and they were offering it in a little plastic cup and here, take this. I mean, how often do we do this? We take the little cup, we put it in our mouths, we nibble it, we toss it in the trash. It doesn't even count as having eaten anything. So for her, for my mentor, her rule was she had to sit down, which meant if she wanted to try it, she picked up the napkin, she picked up the sample, she found a place to have a seat, to take a moment, to think about what she was eating, to really make that conscious choice. It's 
a really great way to be building that habit of being present with what you're eating. Another thing I want you to think about, put it on a plate. Take the food out of its container, put it on a plate. And a nice plate. Take the silverware out of the drawer, take a napkin, and you take that plate and that napkin and that real silverware and you sit down and you enjoy what it is that you put on that plate. You get a better sense of your portions if you're putting it on a plate. It's really easy to take a container that holds three cups and just eat until you get to the bottom. If you take that same container with that three cups of food and you put it on a plate, you're going to look at it and go, wow, that plate is really full. Maybe I don't want to eat that. Maybe I just want half. And then you get a sense of what it takes to really be satisfied. How much food do you need to actually be physically satisfied by what is on your plate? And then you start to get visual cues of what a healthy amount of food on the plate looks like. But you're also treating yourself the way you deserve to be treated by having a place setting, by sitting down, by eating off of a plate eating out of a real bowl, instead of just taking things out of the container, you are honoring that self-worth. And this goes for all kinds of things. We're talking about chips, nuts, put them into a nice container so that you can see the food, so that you can have that interaction of your eyes and your brain and your hands and your mouth and enjoy all of the sensory experience of having that food rather than just sort of reaching in until you get to the bottom and shaking out and going, oh, whoops, I didn't mean to eat that whole bag. Everything that I'm telling you is so that I can hear it for myself one more time because there's never enough times to hear this stuff. Okay, another thing to think about is whether or not you're going to eat in the car. And if you are going to eat in the car, the thing that my mentor did, and I think this is really smart, is she made the rule that she could only ever eat healthy snacks in the car. Some of us spend a lot of time in the car. That's something that is part of our environment. And so it's good to make sure that you're incorporating that into your rules for eating with dignity because the fact of the matter is it's going to come up. So don't pretend like it's not gonna come up. Make a plan. What does it look like to eat with dignity when I spend so much time in the car? Here's another one. For everybody who works in an office, I strongly encourage you to leave your desk when you're having your meals, when you're eating your lunch, even when you're having a snack. It's great to take a break. It's so beneficial. Everybody needs a break. Get away from the screen. In fact, Make it one of your rules for eating with dignity that you have at least one meal every day where there's no screen involved so that you have the opportunity to be present to what you're eating, to listen to your body, to have a conversation with somebody else. It's great. It's so good for your mental health. It's so good for your physical health. Set the screens aside. It takes 10 to 15 minutes for most of us to eat a meal. You can manage 10 to 15 minutes away from the screen and you can manage 10 to 15 minutes away from your desk to have a moment for yourself to eat with dignity. So I really encourage you to implement these rules for eating with dignity in your life in the way that it works. You can have a rule, you can have three rules, you can have 10 rules, whatever it is that works for you. But Think about eating with dignity. Think about how you eat being a reflection of your self-worth, of your pride, of honoring who you are and how important it is to take time to nourish your body in a way that it deserves to be nourished because it does. So I hope that there were some little nuggets here that you can take away with you. If you were inspired by any of this, please let me know, put a comment down below, and of course, go ahead and share this with anybody who needs a little bit of encouragement in their day to make healthy choices a little bit easier. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel, make sure that you share this video with anybody who could use a little bit of extra encouragement, and make sure that you come back to this space next week for the next video because we've got lots of good stuff coming and I can't wait to share it with you. As if you're not 
hungry enough to eat an apple, say it with me, you are not hungry enough.